This is Oliver here, and you're watching Teacher Learning Cast with Pidi Herrera and Benjamin Stewart. Aguascalientes, Aguascalientes, Mexico. For everybody that is willing to watch, we are starting a, this new adventure of a show for you all at different social networks, transmitting something to share about uh, teaching and learning in general. Maybe focus a little bit towards language learning and evaluation, but in general, we want to uh, share our experiences. Dr. Benjamin Stewart, welcome. Good morning. Hello, Pity. Good morning. You know, I was thinking we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, we uh, have the benefit of actually having uh, offices next to each other at the university. We work at the same university, University Autónoma de Aguascalientes. So we have the luxury of having uh, offices next uh, next to each other where we've had many a conversation about eventually having some sort of podcast, some sort of uh, space that we can uh, share our ideas, and it looks like we have finally started with episode number one. I keep thinking that at the beginning of, um, as we start this, looking back, let's say later on, maybe months down the road, looking back at this first episode, probably thinking, you know, uh, things that we could have done better. Uh, but I think you would agree, Pity, that uh, as we get started here, this is going to be a learning experience for for us. And uh, I think our mo main goal is to really begin a conversation, begin a, a space where hopefully we can network with other teachers, other educators, not only here in Aguascalientes, where, which is where we're, we're broadcasting from, but, but uh, beyond. So uh, we want to welcome everyone here to uh, Teacher Learning Cast. Again, we are broadcasting in various social medias. I think mainly we're going to focus on YouTube. Obviously, obviously, we're doing a hangout here where uh, hopefully later we can get other educators involved as well into our live broadcast, but also through Facebook. And I think Pity has mentioned, um, he's already mentioned that he is broadcasting live via Facebook Live, but we have a page called Teacher Learning Cast. So you can find us in Facebook by just uh, doing a search. Should be able to find our page. It's a public page. Anyone can visit take a look at some of the content that we're sharing there. We're also broadcasting via Periscope through Twitter. So we're going to be using the hashtag TLCELT, and uh, feel free to use that hashtag not only throughout the broadcast, but as throughout the week as we uh, hopefully begin to collect different, uh, different questions, information that uh, our community has, uh, is sharing, and try to incorporate that as much as possible into our weekly broadcast. Again, this is going to be as participative as it can be. We want uh, our community to be really part of the conversation and not so much us really dictating and saying what, you know, uh, how things should be or shouldn't be, that we're basically here just to provoke ideas and get the conversation started. So again, um, thanks, Pity. I look forward to getting started with uh, with this endeavor. And, um, and yeah, so I think... I think we can begin by maybe talking, Pity, about kind of what is Teacher Learning Cast and why we decided to to have such a uh, uh, a broadcast or some sort of community. Right. Uh, you make two good points that uh, I want to like stress in there. The first subject is the sharing. Uh, lately, it looks like um, uh, sharing has become one of the most powerful tools, uh, interdependence. It's helping a lot people to develop more. And in education, that's basic. Uh, interdependence, then in the interdependence in the sense of uh, sharing these experiences and giving out ideas so other people can develop their own, build from a maybe a starting point in your idea or their own ideas and make and mix of all these things to share, so that's uh, that, that's something very important, and I and I think that's one of the reasons why we decided to go with this idea and and start trying to involve more people, and um, uh, 
all of this got a, got together, as you said, because uh, what well, we were uh, closely together, and and there are a couple of things in which have come to to cross paths in aspects of technology, in aspects of education, and and it's interesting, and I think that's something that maybe all people can uh, can relate to. Because your field, doctor, and, and and I would like you to to talk about uh, about yourself a little bit. It's kind of uh, it's it's not totally different, but it's kind of a different path from my field in 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 language teaching. I mean, both of us work in language teaching, but uh, you go through one path, and I totally go towards an, another area. Which at the end, they have to be connected in order to have success. Uh, so it's interesting how all these other tools like technology, like the fact that we are working with the same kind of students, uh, like the fact that at the end, the goal from your pad and my pad gets towards the same objective uh, will give us the urgent need of sharing. And, and it all starts with a small talk. And that's what this show is about, a small talk. Uh, so So you can have a point of view and you can share your point of view. We will look for ways to do that. And that's what you'll be looking at us, uh, looking in one way or the other, because we have tried to manage different social networks at the same time. I'm going to be trying to care about my Facebook live transmission, but uh, encouraging you to join the official transmission through the, uh, the, the, all the media that we have. At the same time, I have in the front of my camera, so technology is kind of all involved. But on, on the other side, I also have Benjamin and I have my notes in the other screen. And so you will be looking at us like um, maybe uh, going through all of this, but with the same idea, just to share information in, in a way that it can be spread all over. And I think those are the two key elements for, for TLC, sharing and technology, ICTs. Yeah, what do you think about I think it? it's worth mentioning, yeah, that, um, yeah, we, we both of us, Although, like you mentioned, we have the same uh, students. We teach in the same BA program in English language teaching at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. Um, but your focus is, your expertise comes more from the practicum side, more from the teaching practicum side, where you're looking at the actual practice, the teaching practice. And, and I really look forward to really sharing some of those experiences of how teacher trainers in service and uh, Pre-service teachers are are really experiencing the the act of teaching and how they st get started and some of the challenges that they face. From my side, I focus a little bit more on the English development side, so that's the perspective that I typically will be sharing. Just because most of the classes that I teach are again designed to promote English uh, or improve English uh, language proficiency. Now. Although we are primarily dealing with English language learners at different levels, the, the whole notion of becoming a better speaker, I think we can all relate to native or non-native, quote unquote native or non-native speaker alike, really just how we can improve just becoming a better uh, communicator, whether in spoken form or uh, in written form. So. Um, those two perspectives, we kind of come at we come at the, a little bit different uh, different perspective, different angles. Um, but I I think we have a lot of ex experiences that we can share that we want to share, not because that we think that we again are uh, the only voice in this, but we totally expect that others will disagree with some of our views. In fact, I know uh, through the conversations that we've had, PD, we've had cases where we disagree in certain things and i think that's that's a good thing i think that's something that we want to encourage that if someone else wants to be part of the conversation don't feel necessarily that you have to uh, right. agree with what we say in fact we really encourage those who have different perspectives to speak out and um and, and be heard basically that's that's uh, that's our perspective here so i think for me this per, this podcast community is what I like to refer to it as because I think there's a face-to-face live element to it as well as a kind of a forum or conversation, extended conversation format to it that we want to try to bring together, bring those two types of communication together, live 
discussions as well as, uh, in this case, maybe weekly discussions uh, so that uh, we have more people have more opportunities to participate. There's not going to be one uh, one way to participate in this community. Again, uh, if you are more inclined to work in or share ideas in Facebook, then we have a space for you there. In uh, Twitter, we have a space there as well. And so it's just a matter of trying to uh, find the way that you would like to participate and uh, get involved. Right. That's another keyword. Get involved, please. Uh, I know this is the first transmission. I know some people is just uh, uh, just looking at the live transmissions and, and, and just trying to get an idea of what is this about. Well, uh, you can go back a little bit later on and see more specifics about Teacher Lending Cast. But this is a show. This is a, a, a weekly show that we want to keep on going and, and, and share with you about education in general. So please free to join. Uh, ben, before going on, I would like uh, you to, to tell us about yourself a little bit so people start knowing who they will be dealing with <laughs> because uh, some of my, uh, the, my followers at Facebook may, may not uh, be that familiar with you or, or, or there will be people that, that know you but don't really know the background you have. So can you tell us about yourself, please? Sure. Um... I'm originally from DeSoto, Missouri in the United States. So um, I uh, went to college in St. Louis and basically was uh, my earlier interests were really related to music. I think that's something we have in common, although I don't practice much anymore because um, I know, Peter, you're, you're a musician. Um, but uh, I have a music background, but going into college, got into business, and uh, later uh, uh, met my future wife and decided to move to Mexico. So about 18 years ago, December of 1999, uh, my wife and I moved to Mexico. So we've been here since, since then, about 18 years. And um, I've been working at the University Autónoma de Aguascalientes for uh, about 12 years now, since 2005. And basically kind of got into education as a second career. So I was more, again, uh, along the lines of business and accounting and uh, uh, marketing and kind of made a change, a career change, uh, beginning uh, to work at the, at the university. Um, so I have come from a family of educators, so I have uh, a lot of uh, experiences with, from my parents. They're both uh, music educators. Um, worked in the public school systems for 30 years. They're retired now, but have always kind of had a, a, a desire and interest in teaching and a certain respect for education in general from, from the very beginning. Um, and have since changed careers and really have found, I feel, the, the job that for me, makes makes me the happiest. I think it's one of the, the best jobs being a teacher, and I feel that it's a it's a responsibility that I enjoy and, and take serious. And I, I think that living in in Mexico as a as a foreigner has has been again a, a very good experience as far as learning another culture. Uh, you know, I have a family, and my my whole family is my two boys are from. They were born in, in Mexico, and my wife is from Mexico. So I've had a, a good experience, I think, just learning a lot about myself, just learning how to live in another country. It is, is, it is an adjustment for anyone who has spent any extended amount of time in another country. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's been a, a wonderful experience. And working in the, at the university has been, uh, been very good for me to uh, – find other teachers, other students who are really have the same desire to, to, to teach and uh, help them in their own development, watch them and learn from them as well, learn a lot from my own students about, uh, about the process of professional development and what that looks like as, a, uh, as an English language learner. And, and uh, so for me, it's been a, a very good experience and I think that uh, I think by sharing this, my experiences 
perhaps are unique, I think, uh, just giving maybe maybe my personal background. But I also think that probably what I experience, a lot of other teachers will experience something similar. So I hope to bring some sort of perspective, both as a, a foreigner, as an American living in uh, Mexico, and also just someone who has been here for a little while and have has gained some experience. Um, and uh, again, it's just a matter of really having the desire to share those uh, those experiences with with others. Right. Thank you, man. It's, it, it's always been a pleasure to work with you and to uh, being together in different perspectives and different uh, moments and angles of both of our developments at work because we've been together for a while and uh, from different angles at, at the work. Uh, about myself, very quickly, I just uh, am Mexican, as you uh, can see stereotypically. Though some of you may say I may be from a different part of the world, <laughs> but um, right, I'm from I'm originally from Hermosillo, Sonora, which I don't really know because I was really young when I moved to another place, and I grew up in Zacatecas. Greetings to all my friends there in Zacatecas, and uh, and then I moved to Aguascalientes, and I've been here for a long time, uh, around uh, almost 28 years, I guess. So most part of my life has been here, and I've been uh, I've been working as a teacher since 1997, going through different uh, paths, different uh, at the same time or different times, having experiences in since third grade primary school till university, going through high school, secondary school, and international baccalaureate, which was a nice experience and interesting experience for me. And, uh, and also experience teaching in Spanish abroad, which uh, some of you may be amazed by that, knowing my bad spelling and, and management of the Spanish in that sense. But yeah, I mean, being a teacher, being a professional, you know, everything is planning so I could manage it and I could uh, really plan my classes on, on my weaknesses in, in that case, based on my weaknesses, Spanish management and, and, and um And, 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 and I could do a fine job. So uh, all of that helped me to my main and core job right now. So nowadays, uh, I'm married, got uh, a couple of kids, and, um, and I've been focusing my life on family and, uh, and, jo and the job, uh, which lately has been focused on teacher training. I've been working in teacher training since 2000, and, and, and ever since I've been going more and more into the teaching practice teaching practicum area and um, uh, uh, helping students to develop their own character as teachers. And uh, sadly, I realized about that years after I started. <laughs> But uh, the good thing is that I've, I've been having a certain time realizing how important it is uh, being part of the character of, of those teachers, which in, in, from my point of view are are already teachers, they are practitioners, they are teachers in formation. And yes, they are students, but we are also students. We are also learners, pretty much. That would be the better word to use. Yeah, the we question was, learners, uh, so they how, are also how teachers much already, time have we been going through the practice and how, they are applying things at, at uh, work in a direct and immediate said, parallel like, way years or while they practice. Yeah, so 10 years, pretty believe, much, um, yeah, I've, I've been, been working uh, for, for the university for a while so here. For me, about 12 years at the in the BA, right. um, working in different, different courses, different types of courses. Uh, same little bit, comments. I think it's worth it to be the content that we share, that we make available publicly online is going to be under what's called the Creative Commons license. And so tell about what Creative Commons license. Um, just very briefly, I'm going to share my screen and Uh, just show a couple of websites here. Uh, this is creativecommons.org, and you'll see a list of the six different Creative Commons licenses that are available, along with uh, the legal code for, for each. But generally speaking, all of the content that we produce will be under a Commons license, and basically that allows anyone to reuse, redistribute, mix, 
copy, share as you wish, as long as you pay attribution. So for us, the main thing would be to provide a link back to the source that you found it, if it was a video, if it was a YouTube video, um, uh, or if, if it was something posted somewhere else uh, in social media. If you could include a link in our names, uh, that would uh, suffice. And also include the type of license. In this case, it will be a CC BY attribution license. So those three things, we would, if you decide to use any of the information that we uh, that we um, that we produce or that we share and in turn we will do the same as we uh, create content license comments we'll also pay attribution uh, to that person as we uh, pay forward uh, for for others to use and reuse so again the idea is that the information that we use that we uh, produce we make it available so others can also use it and share it as they as they wish if uh, if it's something that they can use in their classes for example uh, you're encouraged to use that again uh, we only ask that you pay attribution that you give credit generally as a link our names and the type of license again cc by is the uh, the flavor of creative commons license that we'll be using at this at this time so uh pd i don't know if uh, you want to share a few some technologies uh, that you've been thinking about or using maybe this week or this semester. I know each semester we we have these conversations about technology, about what approach we uh, we plan on using, if it's any different than the prior semester. Um, what's what are your thoughts currently about the technologies that you, that you're that you're using with your students? Right. Uh, one of the one of the things I consider for this for this first uh, first cast is. Um, to talk a little bit about technology, since all of this is kind of very technological, and uh, it's fair to say that Ben has uh, more experience on this kind of transmissions, and he does it on a regular basis. In my case, I've been doing some informal uh, communication like this, and a couple of official ones in, in, in presentations at, at different forums. And uh, But this is pretty much the first experience in which I feel a little bit more challenged by the use of it uh, because of handling different technology at the same time. Uh, but, uh, and that's the same, I mean, the idea of, for, for this segment of the, of the cast is to just go back a little bit to how technologies uh, have been uh, in changing the point of view, the way to work and changing life itself and not only in education in all aspects of life um uh, I, I in one of my talks a long time ago i remember i would uh start for guiding teachers towards the idea of the use of technology with the uh, computers with uh, asking them to handing electronic files in any kind of uh word processor and um and the beginning of the use of the emails as a tool for a class, just as an example, you can think about any other technological resource you, uh, you use or you regularly use or you used to use. Uh, uh, but it's just a clear example of how technology, the first thing that came to happen is that it sped up the communication. So we didn't have to wait for certain moments in the course to ask students to deliver something, have them go and type it or write it by hand or create it or whatever, and then coming in a certain specific day to everybody make it deliver at the same time. That, uh, that's uh, just an example of how technology comes to affect life. Now, when we started to use uh, emails, even though if you don't manage that much technology, if you know how to use an email, Maybe you start asking your students to send things uh, through the email, and that totally speeds up the delivery way. So you are not receiving a bunch of uh, products uh, in one emission. You're constantly receiving the products throughout different moments of delivery, and the students at their own pace start to, uh, start to deliver. Yes, maybe at the beginning they can all wait for the last minute to deliver, but 
while working in this experience is something that, uh, that I encourage teachers to reflect, uh, teachers that have been using at least the email, and you can see how this start transform the student's mind a little bit, and it speeds up, and it starts to change from delivering a product to sending drafts, to contacting the teacher before, to sending an email for ask questions, and it starts to speed up this communication. And students don't have to wait for one day or for one hour in the class to do it. Even though you don't read it at the moment they send it, you know it's sent there. And it has come to evolve so much that right now, whenever they deliver something, you can even get an immediate alert in the mobile device, which is what it's been happening. And uh, my point, what I want, the point I want to make there is how this simple example proves uh, uh, at some level that uh, these technologies are really, really uh, encouraging us to, uh, or, or challenging us, as, as you want to say, to change our perceptions, our beliefs on, on things that were done uh, in a different way. I found, uh, I found um, a document by the UNESCO from, from 2013 in which they actually talked about this at the beginning of this document about the ICTs. It's a, it's a document that it's called General Overview of How the Incursion of ICTs speed off uh, well, uh, affect education somehow. And in this uh, document, the UNESCO goes for different ideas and they even have some special names that have been called by experts to this period at the uh, end of the 20th century, in the beginning of the 21st century, that it's called the Society of Knowledge or the Society of Information. And, and the idea is that um, right now we're living in a world where many things uh, are possible because of technology, starting from access to information and distribution. Now, uh, I, I went through, through the document and, and I saw a couple of things that uh, may be very debatable, thinking about uh, the real world that it's out there, that it's not only at the universities and that it's not only in homes where people really have a computer or access, but uh, from the point of view of, um, uh, from this document, Yes, it's something that it's changing uh, processes in collaboration, in access to information, which uh, is fair to say that if you have information and, and, and having access to information becomes into power in all kind of senses. Well, and that's in my opinion, right? And, um, uh, and, and I consider that uh, it, it and that's why I recall this, this information about how, how, to, how communications speeds up all of this, um, uh, all, all of these patterns in, in life, having people uh, building new, uh, building their characters with new uh, uh, aspects that were not there before. And, and in a simple example, people that we say that were born with the internet or the gadget in hand and the students that they don't know how they develop the ability, but they have great skills at handling the mobile devices, the, the tablets, the laptops and, 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 and the mobile phones. And, and, um, and I think that's, that's part of the evolve. Now that said, and, and getting to, to the exact educational aspect of this, is that it, it comes to move the beliefs on uh, all these ways we process the information that comes from students. Information from students in, is coming faster towards our teachers, us teachers, but at the same time, it's also transforming the way we perceive. There are more things involved than just the product itself. Then uh, maybe uh, we, Maybe you you are a teacher that is uh, that it's been always thinking about the processes always and caring about the processes, but anyhow, this dynamic of being able to view to actually view the process 
in transformation to keep record and easy record and to be able to open all of the files at the same time and be playing with the transformation of the files you have and the evolution of that students is something that has come to reach me in the sense that the the kind of the way that that I handle my classes that someday we may discuss that here at the at the cast uh, it's giving me this view of how students are also evolving kind of faster you see you, you don't have uh, you just have to prompt them a little bit and the technology is helping to do the rest of the job to speed up at least the contact and communication uh, as an example it's been a while since students do not show up to class because the nature of the classes are through the devices or in individual sessions in which they have to deliver certain things. So one way or another, they are present. It's been a while since the students don't deliver something. Maybe, well, quality may be something we can talk a little bit aside uh, or because it needs a little bit of a, 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 a major analysis. But right now, I just want to focus on the, on the speeding up, on the, on the fact that it's it actually helping and encourages students to do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. And I think that's one of the great advantages. And I totally agree with this document of, of the UNESCO in, in that sense. And, and, um, uh, and the way it's building upon, upon society in general, I would like to retake something from here. It says, um, mm -hmm. it says, uh, the use of information and communication technologies grew widely in the last year of the 20th century and the 21st century, shaping what has been called the society of knowledge or the society of information. In practice, there is no sphere of human life that has not received the impact of this type of, this type of development. Health, uh, financing, job marketing, communication, governments, industrial productivity, etc. As in other periods of history, knowledge has had a quick and explosive growth with practically instantaneous distribution. The world has become smaller and interconnected in which for better or for worse, that's up to you guys, uh, 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 good or bad pieces of news reach their destiny quicker. Uh, and it goes on with, with more claims about it. And, uh, and further on, it makes an emphasis that uh, this nature it's giving you new things that were never there and that could have never existed without this kind of technology. And I would put those words exactly in the classroom. We are getting to paths, unknown paths, which sometimes even the learners reach first that ourselves. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key words for me, mentioning, you make a lot of good points about, about the technology, but I'm thinking, uh, the word of accessibility. How do we become accessible to our students? How do they become accessible to each other through a course that they have in common? And it certainly has changed over the years as how we communicate, we as teachers and students. And you know, you're right, students bring in their mobile devices. All of our students have mobile devices. What most of them are cell phones. Some bring tablets. Some uh, in my class even bring a laptop for writing classes. But they have mobile technologies where the content that we are engaging in in our classes, they have they have uh, contact. They have access to that content at all times. Okay, not just right. in the class. Not just. Right. Uh, you know, face to face with their teachers. All of the courses that we teach primarily are face to face, but it's really looking at how we can use educational technologies really to complement, provide an alternative experience for our students so that they have different ways, they have options of interacting. It's not always going to be perhaps them coming in, sitting down at their desk in front of the teacher and begin writing and doing that the same way every single day throughout the entire semester. It's going to be uh, almost infinite number of ways that they can actually engage, whether they engage in technologies face-to-face -face or whether they engage in technologies outside of class. 
in my case, for example, in writing class, right, that it's changed a lot just within the last, you know, five or six years, how my writing students are interacting and how they, how I try to make uh, the content available to them. So a lot of times they'll bring in their, their cell phones to class and, and I encourage, you know, cell phone use, of course, in my class, all that's there. If you come into my class, you'll, they're constantly on their phones because they are actually writing and reading and researching uh, in class and on their mobile devices, pa participating in the activity uh, through their mobile device. And, you know, they feel comfortable doing that. This is where they live and interact normally. So it's not a stretch to really incorporate that same type of communication that they're already used to maybe socially to bring in that educational context and allow them to really uh, continue that same form of communication. So um, I think that it's, I, it's, it's in some cases made teaching and learning easier, but I think it's also now more complex. And I think as teachers, we need to be willing to see the, um, the some of the challenges that they face, but also the different ways that they interact, maybe ways that we didn't think of as teachers, they are going to be, uh, you know, uh, inquiring and, and asking, well, can I do this? Can I do this? And, and we have to be prepared to, based on the objectives of the course to really say, okay, this, this is a good option for them to do, to interact in a certain way. Perhaps another way is not the best option. Again, depending on the type of uh, learning that we're, uh, that we want our students to really experience. But, uh, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge, but I think it's something that we all need to be thinking about regardless of to what degree we use educational technologies. It's hard to imagine now, not considering some form of technology in some yeah. aspect of our of our class, and I think just to totally reject the notion of any technology, I think is uh, personally a little bit short sighted. I think that we need to look at the technologies and then see for ourselves, based on our own profile as a teacher and the profiles of our students, what makes the most sense. And I I go back to our discussions, Pity, that we've had almost every. Uh, at the beginning of almost all semesters is like, oh, what the courses that we're going to teach this semester, what are we going to do? Are we going to be doing something similar? And, and I think, uh, I know for me personally, every semester I'm tweaking, changing slightly uh, the types of technology, even though I may be using Google Docs, the same type of Google Docs, the way in which my students interact might be slightly different. So it's always for me, always a, a continual change right. and adaptation and and flow really and through even throughout the same semester as to how technology is being used what the role of technology is uh, based on again you know the current situation so it's a it's a learning experience i i know i've made mistakes with uh using technology in the past but i think that if we have this mindset and i i really my main point i want to make here is this mindset or personal philosophy that really is going to be required on the part of the teacher to really look at technologies and say, okay, I'm willing to take some risks. I'm willing to, mm -hmm. you know, be a little bit more reflective in my own practice to really try to get the most out of the, the experience, try to get the most out of each class that I have with my students and what tools do I have available and what do I know about those tools at this current time that will help me achieve that? Right. Uh, and, and going back to the example of the, of the email and just uh, food for thought for everybody, uh, as an example of what you were saying, the challenge of it. Now, the email is spitting up the delivery and they are delivering more than the products and they're delivering drafts and contacting you. How fast can you reach the capacity of delivery in comparison to your capacity of analysis, revision, and feedback? Because you are not receiving just one paper or one draft. You are receiving drafts and papers from all your students and, and, and let's say different courses if you are having different simultaneous courses during the semester. And how fast can you make that process to go through it and 
have the feedback, the proper feedback for a student. That's just food for thought as an example of the challenge it has become. And all of that to going back to the promotion of our TLC cast, teacher learning cast. Yes, this is also another example of how this evolving. And another aspect you were mentioning, the engagement of students, how to how students find different ways, uh, how we reach them, how they reach us. Um, uh, this is another way of doing it. We want to reach more people, more and more teachers to join this cast every week. Uh, hopefully we'll be done same hour, same day, Saturday's morning, uh, around eight, a little bit uh, after eight. And, and we'll try to be here precisely with that objective, trying to reach you teachers, including teachers' information. And, and, and that's, uh, this is one of the purposes to reach students, reach teachers, reach, uh, uh, well, as I mentioned before, teachers are students, the students are teachers. And, um, and through this reaching, start making people share and give us your ideas, uh, tell us what you think about all of these topics that we discuss. Uh, today we had a couple of topics and um, still something to come. How are we doing in time, Ben? Um, yeah, we probably need to get close to kind of concluding uh, this first broadcast. We still have a few minutes, but... Uh, we'll All right. Okay. Because, uh, well, just to close up that idea of technology, this is a good example of it. Please uh, give a like, follow the page. We have a Facebook page, uh, which is TLC, Teacher Learning Cast. Uh, we'll, you will find... Um, the links to the to the different uh, social networks and and web pages you can find us and, and the idea is for you to to follow us to like it and not with the idea of just following us but the idea of having something to share with us and please leave your comments whether you are watching right now or you are watching in the further posts um, and, and send us give us your comments tell us what you think about this give us your opinion about the topics. Uh, give us uh, give us something to uh, start doing this interconnection, and uh, we want you to be part of this cast. And hopefully, all of you can be part of it in these live transmissions, uh, even at a screen if you dare to do so. And and, and we can invite you to join. But uh, let's keep up this communication. Uh, skipping out to the next topic, Ben. Uh, and something I would like to do every week, and hopefully we'll be able to do it, is to go through practical aspects in short. And, and, and that would lead me to the experience of the week. That's what I will, uh, it's a name. If you have a better name, Ben, or somebody else comes with a better name, give us a name for that, that um, moment. Uh, I would like to use this moment for Ben and I to very briefly talk about something that happened or something we came across during the week as an experience, as a topic, as uh, maybe an article you read. Uh, I know ben, it's, ben reads every day different articles from all the world and, and he is uh, gaining and gaining all this knowledge that can share with us in, in this uh, broadcast. Uh, but that's the idea. What's the, what's the situation of the week? And um, Ben, do you have anything you would like to share with us? Briefly, something you can recall in the week. Well, I think uh, one of the, th the things that I thought about a lot this week, uh, I'm taking a, cre a Creative Commons certification course, and we've had we've talked a lot about this. Uh, we are constantly promoting uh, the use of e-portfolios or portfolio assessment with our students. So, uh, I thought a lot about this week about uh, again revisiting Creative Commons and. And to what degree I need to, as a teacher, help my students who are pre-service and in-service teachers uh, think about and how much they need to know about Creative Commons in order for them to make the best decisions for creating their own e-portfolio or evidence of their own work uh, so that they are uh, legally uh, binding to, to these to the use of content. So, you know, as you know, a lot of students will use lesson plans. They may use images. They, they, they uh, are encouraged really to use information that they find 
online and, and adapt it to their own context. And then that could easily be then shared in an e-portfolio. So it's really trying to think, uh, and again, this week I, I've been thinking a lot about how to approach the, uh, the sharing of what Creative Commons is and what they need to be doing with Creative Commons uh, with regard to their own e-portfolios. And I know this is a, that would be a, a podcast in and of itself, uh, the topic of e-portfolios. But I, I think for me, this is um, something that I thought a lot about this week in kind of prep in preparation of uh, presenting probably this week that's coming up, uh, talking to them a little bit more directly about Creative Commons in within the context of their own personal and professional e-portfolio. All right, thanks, Ben. Interesting. How about yourself, BD? What uh, what have you been uh, reading about or thinking about uh, this week? Well, I was uh, I was going to talk about uh, something different, but you know, yesterday I had a presentation with some of my students about the use of the voice and the, and the use of language in the classroom. And that may be a topic we may take later on and we may discuss also, I mean, just giving ideas to <laughs> all we can share and discuss. But, uh, but uh, this, this changed me the view and made me focus on the delivery way I had for, for this topic. Uh, somewhere along the line, I came across power teaching that I know teachers from the program of education in Aguascalientes use a lot. Uh, and, and there are very good teachers who are used to handling these kind of techniques in the classroom, uh, power teaching techniques. And, uh, and I came across a video too, which I've watched before, but didn't pay attention that closely. And with the video, many ideas came to me for the delivery way with students. It's a large group, 54 students in a, talk, in a two hours talk in which uh, there was a lot of information to, to summarize because we just have one session of two hours to make a summary of different aspects about the use of language in the classroom and the use of the voice in the classroom, which, by the way, may be topics for a full course, right? A full, a full thing. So, so I had to summarize in two hours and in a large group, which was a really, really big challenge. I know many teachers have this challenge day after day after day. Uh, but the, the plus was the amount of information and, and, and how much can they retain about it. So the power teaching techniques, I started to use these techniques in combination to my own teaching style, which I've had for a while. Um, and, uh, and at the end, I had a mixture of, uh, of these power techniques to maintain attention, to, to keep students attending, to keep students following you, participating during the classroom, which for me, it's the key in any talk or conversation, keep, keep uh, the audience participating with you. And, and I really like that something that I thought I, I was kind of risking, the use of techniques that are more frequently used for children in, in, in learners from university level. And I was amazed to see the reaction. They, they like it a lot. Many things stuck in their minds. They enjoy the class by the comments they gave me at, at the end. I didn't have to ask. They came, a couple of students came by themselves. And, and beyond that, other students came uh, to keep on the discussion about the topic because they have to implement that in a class. So with the, it, it showed me that it was really effective. It was something really effective, and, and they kept the attention and the small details uh, related to the technique. Uh, I, I don't want to get that much into it because it's another topic to discuss. But the point is how combining these strategies, which in my belief were not that according to the age of the students, work as a charm and the topic i think I, I was very glad the way the delivery was and i have proof that i reached something with my students i'll tell you about it later on because this week they're going to do a practice in which we're going to focus on the use of voice and language in the classroom well i think that's a great topic and hopefully those who are watching this and even maybe some of your students pd 
we can think about in terms of either next week or some upcoming episode where we can bring in uh, some teacher, one, at least one teacher or more, uh, into the actual broadcast. Again, as uh, to repeat what Pete has already mentioned, we really would like to get as, uh, as much as possible teachers, pre-service or in-service teachers. It can be students. It can be uh, graduates from the BA. It can be anyone who is uh, here uh, either locally in Aguascalientes or abroad. But any teacher that really uh, wants to talk about a particular topic, uh, just reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to, to schedule uh, a, a talk and bring you into the conversation, into the live broadcast. If I could, Petey, I would like to briefly share uh, how we plan on organizing our podcast. And this is just one way that we're going to do for, to, to make this available uh, to you. We want to make the recordings of all of these podcasts available and we're we're trying to find the best way to organize those so that uh, the content becomes useful for you and you can find this information uh, afterwards yeah, right. beyond just the live broadcast if um i'm going to share my screen here just very okay very quickly and i want to pull up my website can you see my website there bd Oh, I still can't see. No, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm still looking at you at, on the screen. Oh, okay, maybe I clicked the wrong option here. Let me try again here. Can you All see? All right, my... that's your screen now. Okay, um, so this is a WordPress site. This is uh, where I usually share a lot of my thoughts and what I what I try to do. But I have a page here for Teacher Learning Cast, and uh, here you can find the broadcast. Uh, and towards the bottom is where I'm going to try to organize recordings. So the first recording here is located just below leadership. But these categories will try to, you know, offer a wide variety of topics, so not to talk about the same thing every week. Uh, but here I want to try to create this video repository where our um, community can go and easily find uh, the different uh, types of videos that we've created based on the different topics. Uh, this is one way. We also have a YouTube playlist. And so you can also just go directly into YouTube and under this playlist and find all of the recordings in order. Um, since this is the first one, this is, we just have one, but uh, you'll be able to find all the videos here as well. So depending on, you know, the way in which you want to try to find the, the uh, videos, whether it's chronological, which would be here in the playlist, or by topic, uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for the content to be accessible. So I just wanted to share that uh, with everyone. And I know we're getting close to an hour. We want to do our best to uh, limit our weekly podcast to an hour, because we know yep. all of our time is uh, precious and uh, we're all busy. Uh, but I, I think Getting started, uh, PD, I think this is a, a good way to get started, to try to introduce a little bit about why we want to do this, what's our uh, objectives, and, and what we want to try to achieve. And again, it's mainly to start the conversation, to get as many teachers involved, uh, pre-service, in-service teachers, uh, teachers that are local here to Aguas Calientes. We have a lot of uh, wonderful teachers here that have gone through our BA and other teachers that come from outside of Aguas Calientes to teach. We have a big community of uh, English language teachers here in, in Aguas Calientes locally that we would love to uh, get, have more opportunities to really uh, reach out to and, um, and uh, discuss topics with and issues and successes. So uh, we really look forward to uh, these weekly broadcasts. Feel free to contact us. Please uh, contact us in Facebook, via Twitter, via YouTube. Come by our office if you're here local. Just chat if you want right. to be involved. Um, we really want to open this up to all educators that we have contact with and, um, and hopefully uh, be able to spread the word and how we can really improve uh, student learning, really how we can improve our own experiences and so that our students are getting the most out of our, their educative experience. Right, right. Uh, 
could you please share with us the, the main Facebook page for TLC, please? To invite sure. everybody to join the page and uh, give it a like, follow us, leave your comments. You can reach information there. And, and from there, you can jump into Benjamin's webpage, to my webpage. You'll get the information as soon as we can get our get all this uh, idea. I mean, we got it together, but we still have some gaps to fill. But um, uh, I, I would like you to see that's uh, the Facebook page Benjamin is showing on the screen. Yeah, this uh, is the uh, TLC Teach, uh, Teaching Learning Cast Facebook page. You should be able to search it and be able to find it. Uh, feel free to to like. Uh, we may later form a, a small group in here, but for right now, it's a public page, and we're sharing basically all things related to education and English language learning, general education. Uh, we want to try to uh, share here as well. So feel free to post information directly to this Facebook page, and um, and, 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 and we're going to try to be in contact. As soon as possible to anybody who is willing to share anything, ask questions or whatever. And um, um, besides the Facebook page, we have our own web pages. Follow up web, uh, our web pages, please. And um, I think we 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 managed to 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 cover different sources. There's people looking at my personal profile in Facebook Live. Uh, but uh, I know this is not the official transmission. This is kind of different, and maybe the audio is not that good. But you can go to the source, and in the source, you can actually watch, and you will have all the information about the video. You will have the video available. We are going to share the links about the aspects we talked about, and we want to hear from you what topics would you like us to discuss, or if we don't, we, we don't are not really that into the topic, we could get somebody else to join us and help us with any topic. I would like to add that Dr. Benjamin uh, has experience in research and he has uh, shared these uh, research topics with many other teachers. Just for you to know that uh, the, the kind of expansion we can have towards those topics at that level and that kind of interest. From my end, uh, I have experience in, in teaching practicum but uh, in, in that sense, I have access to primary, secondary, and high school, too. And we can also talk about topics related to you all, guys, especially all the, the guys that, that, that work at uh, federal programs. We can also go towards that end and get people to join us. And, and, and we would like um, you to know that this cast is made with the intention of making a connection point among all of, amongst all of us, not only in Aguascalientes, but in Mexico and the world. And hopefully we'll be here every week. This is just the beginning and we will, we will see you really, really soon. And again, I too look forward to uh, seeing how the show kind of evolves, how our community evolves and how we, how this whole uh, endeavor comes, comes to be. And I want to thank everyone who is who has visited us, who has watched us in the in the live broadcast, as well as those who have checked out the uh, recordings. We want to thank you for uh, for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully. And again, reach out to us if you'd really like to be uh, more involved in the uh, community in terms of the broadcast that we that we do. If you just want to post questions, that's perfectly fine too. Let it. There's no wrong way of participating, but the, the point is just to uh, create a space for you to uh, to start a conversation and be part of the conversation and have a voice. All right. Well, now it's a pleasure, right? I think so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I'm really glad that we started this adventure. Hopefully, it's gonna last for a while, and uh, we don't know how much. We don't know where. It, the life take us in pets, but right now it has taken us to create this TLC cast, the Facebook page, and just um, heads up, everybody. Many things coming up here, yes. so join us. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. We'll, we're signing off. We'll see you in the next uh, broadcast. Bye.